karibu mtazamaji mimi ni Mashirima Kapombe na mtangazaji wetu wa ishara ni Meresha Owiti. Tunaanza ta, na taarifa kutoka mjini Eldoret ambapo Rais wa Nigeria Muhammadu Buhari na Hassan Sheikh wa Somalia wameungana na Rais Uhuru Kenyatta wa Kenya katika chuo cha mafunzo ya jeshi cha Moi huko Eldoret kuwakumbuka wanajeshi wa Kenya walioaga huko El Ade huko Somalia. Marais hao wamemhakikishia wa Kenya kuwa mataifa ya Nigeria na Somalia vile vile yataendelea na vita dhidi ya ugaidi. Na narifiwa kuwa tarifa hiyo tutaipata katika mdu shukwa mrefu kwa kina Lakini mwanahabari wetu ni kuambua amekuwa kifuatilia uh, ibada hiyo Na sasa anaungana nasi kwa njia moja kwa moja kutueleza yaliyosemwa na marais hao watatu kuhusiana na vita didi ya ugaidi Ni kuambua uwanja ni wako Na mbila shaka mashirimani Afla iliudhuriwa na rais wa Kenya, eh, rais Uhuru Kinyata Na marais wengine akiwemu rais wa Nigeria, eh, Muhammadi Um, na rais wa uh, taifa la Somalia ili kuweza kuomboleza pamoja um, ile ama lile tatizo lililokumba jeshi la Kenya uh, lilofanyika wiki moja iliyopita na mashirima ni umoja ambao viongozi hao walionyesha kwamba kweli vita dhidi ya ugaidi ni vita ambavyo vinafaa kupiganwa na kila kiongozi ama na kila taifa tukikumbua kwamba hivi ni vita ambavyo vinaendelea katika taifa la Somalia pia ikiwemo uh, taifa la Somalia likiwa na Kenya eh, ambapo wanapigana na kundi la Al-Shabaab pia taifa la Nigeria ni taifa ambalo limekuwa likikumbwa na shida ya um, Boko Haram kwa muda ambayo ambapo ukijaribu kuangalia ni kwamba eh, makundi haya mawili ya Boko Haram na eh, Al-Shabaab yana eh, lengo moja ambalo kwa, 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 eh, kwa kiasi fulani ya mweza kwa dhiri nchi hizi tatu na basi tungeza kusema basi ni uh, nchi ambazo zimeunganishwa na kitu kimoja ugaidi kwa siku ya leo na wameungana uh, katika ule kumbi wa Moy Air Base Eldoret kuweza kuwa kwa, kutuwa poli na rambirambi kwa zile familia pamoja na wale uh, askari ambao tulipoteza kule El Hadi Somalia wiki moja iliyopita basi kuna mambo ambayo yameibuka kwamba ni umoja ambao utatuunganisha kama taifa kama mataifa haya matatu umoja basi kuzingatia rangi eh, dini pamoja na pia eh, ule ukoo ambao sisi tunatoka ku, kwa eh, kwetu sote pamoja hii ni ishara kwamba ugaidi ni jambo ambalo tunafaa kupigana sote na usemi wake rais Kenyatta ni kwamba kama eh, wito ulivotolewa kwamba mata uh, yale lile jeshi la Kenya KDF ambalo ni kisehemu cha Amisom liweze kutoka Somalia lakini Rais Kenyatta amesema kwamba katu uh, KDF haitotoka Somalia hadi pale tutakapohakikisha kwamba vita hivi vimekamilika uh, wakisema kwamba iwapo tutatoka Somalia kama jeshi la Kenya basi itamaanisha kwamba yule adui ameweza kupata lile lilikuwa anatarajia ambao ni ushindi kwetu kama taifa kwa kumashirima na masante sana ni kuambua basi tupate picha uh, za tukio hilo maibada hiyo kutoka mjini Eldoret.
masuala mengine jaji wa mahakama ya juu Philip Tunoi atasubiri siku saba ambapo jopo maalum la GSC litamchunguza kuhusiana na madai ya kupokea rushu ya shilingi milioni mbili na kutoa ripoti yake hatua hii imejiri baada ya tume ya huduma za mahakama kubuni kamati ya watu sita waliokuwa na kikao cha faraga kilichoongozwa na jaji mkuu Willi Mutunga Tunoi anadaiwa kuchukua hongo kutoka kwa gavana wa Nairobi Dr. Ivan Skidero ili apendelee upande wake katika kesi ya kupinga uhalali wa ushindi wake katika uchaguzi mkuu uliopita. I was told that he comes from my own district. Anapojikuna kichwa na kuponda upeo wa taaluma yake itakomea wapi na ni uamuzi upi utakaofikiwa na kamati ya watu sita iliyotoliwa na tume ya utumishi wa mahakama hii leo. Philip Tunui sasa yuko na siku hizo saba kusubiri hoja ya kamati iliyoteuliwa. So the members of the special committee are Professor Margaret Kobia who share the committee, Professor Githu Muigai, Honorable Agrey Mchelule, Honorable Emilio Minde, Honorable Winnie Gushu and Honorable Kip Korio Bet. Tunoi anakabiliwa na madai ya kupoko ya hongo ya shilingi milioni miambili kutoka gavana Ivan Skidero na amekuisha kana madai hayo. Akisema kuwa na lengo kwa sababu za siyasa za uchaguzi wa rais mwaka alfumili kumina saba. Issue of succession within the rank of the chief justice, deputy chief justice and me the senior member of the Supreme Court. Kanona hilo zipo siyasa za urithi wake akiwa mmoja wa majaji walioona uzoefu katika idara ya mahakama ikikumbuka kuwa yumo miongoni mwa wajaji saba wa mahakama ya juu inayoongozwa na jaji Willi Mutunga nine of them and some of them even would wish me dead so that they take over from me <laughs> some have refused to greet me since i refused to retire at the age of 70 <laughs> Lakini yesi wa kiongozo na jaji wili mutunga We mwakishia kuwa kamati hiyo Itaendesha uchunguzi wao kwenji ya huru na haki The commission will handle this matter with utmost fairness Independence and fidelity to the constitution In such issues like this It is fundamental that You tell the accuser The nature of the accusations And what he or she as to say about them. Zaidi ya hayo tunuyupo na mtegu wa pili iwapo watafuadafu kuendelea kuhudumu kama jaji wa mahakama ya juu. Ile kesi ya kustafu kwake uwa muzu wake utatulewa ijuma na ikiwa tasakama na mtegu huu. Ana uwezo kukata rufa na ikiwa kamati ilio undo itamshini kizarais kuunda jopu la kumchungoza. Bivu na mbichi ni ijuma tano ijayo. Francis Mtaki, Kaitian Leo. Kenya ni miongoni mwa mataifa 30 fisadi mno ulimwenguni shirika la Transparency International limetoa ripoti yake kuhusu fisadi mwaka 2015 na kuiorodhesha Kenya kati ya nchi zenye uwezo huo makna maso anaarifu zaidi Vita dhidi ya ufisadi nchini vimeonekana kukosa kuzaa matunda kwa mujibu wa ripoti ya hivi punde ya Transparency International As a country we have basically stagnated in terms of the score um, for the last four years we had a score of 27 uh, in a row and now we've gotten 25 in a row so the, the score for 2014 was 25 out of 100 the score for 2015 was 25 out of 100 Ripote hiyo pia ilinakili mataifa kusini mwajangwa la Sahara yakiwa na matokeo mabaya zaidi ulimwenguni kwa alama 33 kwa wastani ikilinganishwa na 44 wastani ya jumla ya ulimwengu mzima If you look at it from an East African perspective then the best uh, performer will be Rwanda which is the only country in East Africa that made it past the 50 uh, 50, the 50 score mark uh, then it is followed at a, a, a far distance by Tanzania and then Kenya and Uganda coming in one place and then Burundi uh, uh, further down. Denmark kwa mwaka wapili sasa imeshikilia na fasi ya kwanza kwa kushiriki kwa uchache mno katika harakati za ufisadi. Mataifa jirani na Denmark kama Finland, Sweden na Norway pia yamepiga mepiga atua kwa kuwa miongoni mwa mataifa kumi bora ulimwenguni. There are 
three main aspects to the fight against corruption. There is a prevention aspect, which means uh, investing in um, building integrity systems, in uh, ethics and integrity education. But there is an important aspect about holding people to account for engaging in corruption. Mataifa hayo yametajwa kuwa na uhuru wa wanahabari, viongozi waliowajibika zaidi na vyombo huru vya sheria. Kenya ingali inashuhudia madai ya ofisadi yanayoibuka kutoka vyombo vinavyotazamiwa kuupiga ofisadi vita kama idara ya polisi na mahakama. Then the people are growing up do not uh, have a fairly warped uh, uh, moral compass that it is actually okay to do these things. Uh, because we've not punished people uh, and they can see it that those who have gone out of their ways to steal from the public have can flaunt their wealth. Taifa bora zaidi Afrika ni Botswana kwa alama 63 huku likishika nambari ya 28 ulimwenguni. Kenya kwenye nafasi ya 139 ilionyeshwa kuwa fisadi zaidi kuliko hata Nigeria kwa nafasi ya 138. Zimbabwe ilichukua nafasi ya 150 huku mataifa ya Somalia na Korea Kaskazini yakivuta mkia. Mark na Maswa KTN News. Tazamaji na kumsikia kidogo nitarejea katika muda usiku mrefu na taarifa zaidi lakini kwanza kwenye kamusi ya leo kuna hili neno ambalo linatumika kutoa maana ya chakula kilichopoteza ladha pia linatumika kutoa maana ya sehemu ya mwili isiyokuwa na hisia yoyote sasa neno hilo ni gani tujifunze kwenye kamusi ya leo Katika kamusi ya leo tunaangazia neno kipooza Kipooza ni chakula kilichopoteza ladha kwa kuchacha, kuoza au kuwekwa kwa muda mrefu. Mfano katika sentensi, chakula hiki ni kipooza, kimepoteza ladha baada ya kukaa tangu juzi. Karibu tena na asanti sana kwa kuendelea kwa nasi. Moja kwa moja tufululize ahadi maeneo ya pwani ambapo kiongozi wa Code Raila Odinga amezuru pwani ya Kenya katika hatua ya kumpa mgombea wa kodu maarufu katika maandalizi ya uchaguzi mkuu ujao wa eneo bunge la Malindi ama uchaguzi mdogo wa eneo bunge la Malindi. Ziara ya Odinga imefanywa siku chache tu baada ya ziara ya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta pwani ya Kenya. Ziara hiyo ilianzia katika eneo la Kongoea ambapo Raila alishiriki katika hafla ya kutoa jina jipya kwa barabara ya Nyali road ambayo sasa itajulikana kama Fidel Odinga katika mtaa huo wa Kongoea huko Mombasa. Raila aliandamana na viongozi wa code kutoka uh, kaunti ya Mombasa wakiongozwa na gavana Ali Hassan Joho. Viongozi hao pia wamempigia debe Willy Mtengo ambaye ni mgombea wa ODM katika uchaguzi mdogo wa eneo bunge la Malindi. Akiwa hutubia wafuasi wake Mombasa, Raila amesema kuwa ana uhakika kuwa muungano wake utaendelea kuwa na umaarufu pwani ya nchi. Kila mtu ambaye hana kura achukue nini kura. Kila mtu aulize jirani yake ambaye hana kitambulisho ampeleke achukue kitambulisho na ampeleke achukue nini kura. Baba Baba Raila watu wote katika Kenya, watu wote Afrika, watu wote wale mzima wanatambua wewe ni baba wa taifa la Kenya. Nataka nimwambie party leader wangu ya kwamba ikiwa hujatuona safari hii watajua kwamba kachumbani ni mboga hapa pwani sisi tunaitumia uhuru unashikwa mpira unampatia ruto uhuru na mpira ana mpira utampatia dwale mwaima dwale na mpira ana mpira dwale ana mpira ampatia mungaru mungaru na mpira kwa metereza manguka shiri Kwingineko wana blog wa kiongozwa na mwakili wao James Orengo pamoja na Peter Kaluma walifika katika makao makuu ya CID mapema hii leo. Hata hivyo wana blog hao walifahamishwa kuwa ni mwana blog Robert Alai pekee ndiye alihitajika kufika kuhojiwa na polisi kueleza anachofahamu kuhusu mambo anayoandika katika mitandao ya kijamii. Aliandikisha taarifa kuhusu tuhuma za utumizi mbaya wa vifaa vya mawasiliano pamoja na kuidharau serikali. Hata hivyo mwakili wake walisisitiza kuwa haki za na habari zinatakiwa kulindwa. Swala so, hili linajiri siku chache baada ya mwana blogu mwingine Yasi Njuma kukamatwa kwa tuhuma sawa wakati wa shambulizi la El Ade mjini Somalia. Trying to get information uh, from uh, Mr. Robert Alai 
on the basis of finding something that can lead them to an offense uh, which can then be preferred against him. Uh, and I find this totally strange because when the police require for you to appear as a person under investigation, there should be some preliminary investigations. Anans is very relative. So being brought here because you have uh, annoyed somebody or because you have uh, talked about a public official is very wrong because every public official is a public official. If you don't want to be commented about or to be questioned or to be held accountable, I think you need to resign from the public office. So mine is only to thank the lawyers and the bloggers who came here for standing with me through this time. I thought, we thought that it was all of us who are needed here, but it, they, they, they later clarified and said that it's only me who was needed. Even the officers themselves have no belief that they can be able to sustain a credible charge before a court of law. And that's why they are scavenging for evidence uh, uh, from the would be suspects that they consider should appear before them. Unfortunately, that even some of the laws that they are attempting to deploy in uh, combating uh, bloggers were actually declared unconstitutional during the Petition on Security Laws Amendment Act. And all we are asking for is that let there be fidelity. Tuangazia masuala ya elimu sasa waziri wa elimu daktari Fred Matiangi ameongeza muda wa makataa kwa mwaka mmoja kabla ya kufungwa kwa mabewa kumi ya chuo kikuu cha kisi kwa kile kinachotajwa kuwa viwango vya chini vya utoaji elimu Mwamuzi huo umeafikiwa baada ya mazungumzo ya kina kati ya usimamizi wa chuo hicho wizara ya elimu na tume ya usimamizi wa vyo vikuu humu nchini Aida Matiangi ameteua jopo la maafisa watatu wa shauri likiongozwa na aliyekuwa naibu chansela wa chuo kikuu cha Nairobi Profesa Chris pas kiamba kuvisimamia vyo hivyo ili kupandisha viwango vyake. We have been very clear to our colleagues from Kisi University on this issue and that is why we've gone to the extent that we have gone today in terms of not only the commission and I thank them very sincerely providing them a one year opening or extension of the closure notice but in addition to the one year closure notice extension I have also taken the initiative to ensure that they have the right advice and support to do the right thing so that we are not having another press conference in February 2017 talking about non-compliance. And the three people I have appointed today to work on this matter will help them sort this matter out completely. Karibu kwenye safu ya KTN leo michezo. Kinyume na matarajio ya wengi, Jackson Sali aliyekuwa anaichezea timu ya FC Leopards amejiunga na mabingwa wa ligi kuu nchini Gor Mahia. Sale ni kati ya wachezaji wapya katika kambi ya Gor Mahia. Kikosi ambacho mwaka 2016 kitakuwa kikijaribu kutoa taji la ligi kuu kwa mara ya 16 na kama Moses Wahisi anavyotuarifu Gor Mahia ina matumaini ya kuwa na msimu wa kufana. Baada ya kubobea katika michuano yao ya kirafiki kule Ethiopia na Sudan kwenye maandalizi yao ya msimu ujao, ni peupe kuwa Gormaya ina ari ya kungaa hata zaidi mwaka 2016. Msimu jana wa Kugalo ilitamba na kuridhisha wengi na kando ya kutoa taji la ligi kuu nchini msimu huu, matumaini yao ni kuzidisha ubabe wao mwaka huu. Uh, what we did last year was we raised the bar and uh, the teams are trying to organize themselves, uh, clubs are trying to organize themselves better to try to uh, challenge us. And uh, so, uh, you know, we have to keep pushing in the direction that we want to go, uh, which is bet become better as a, as, a, as a club, better as a team. What we do, we have to be prepared for each and every game because we know there is no, there is no easy team in this season. Na komandalizi yao Gormai mesajili na hodhe wa FC Leopards, Becky Jackson Sale. Sale na jiunga na wachizaji wengine ikiwe mo Jacob Kelly, Francis Kahata, Eric Ouma kutoka shule upili ya Kakamega, James Ogata wa Agrochemicals, Amos Nondi aliyewachezea katika timu ya Gormaya wachezaji waziozidi miaka 19 pamoja na Jacques Twisenge kutoka Rwanda. I've been looking to, to add to our uh, defensive aspects since I've come to the club. Um, we've looked at a few different players, hasn't uh, worked out. Salah became available and uh, he has uh, <coughs> some good experience. Uh, both with his club, his former club, and um, and uh, with the national team, uh, so uh, he will uh, 
he will provide uh, competition in there. All the teams, they now know what we are capable of doing. So whoever is going to meet Gor will be coming prepared. And in that connection, we also have to pull up our socks and uh, live to the expectation. Hata hivyo kibarua sasa ni kwa wachezaji wapya kumridhisha mkufunzi mkuu Frank Natala. Jacob Kelly and uh, Aguanda and they can score goals and there's some other players there as well. Uh, Kahata can play up there, uh, Ali can play up there, George can play up there. Uh, and they've all shown very very well. So Jack, Jack isn't just going to walk into the team if he comes here. Jack, he's going to have to work work hard to get into this team. Kogali itaanza kibarua chao cha msimu wa mwaka 2016 dhidi ya bandari FC tarehe 6 Februari kwa nia taji la DSTV Super Cup ikiwa ni kabla ya kuchuana na CFC Naps kutoka Madagascar katika ligi ya vilabu bingwa Afrika tarehe 13. Msimu wa mwaka 2015 ulikuwa ni wa kufana sana kwa timu ya Gormahia. Mwaka 2016 kibarua chao kitakuwa ni kigumu hata zaidi pale ari ya wachezaji hawa ni kutoa taji lao mara nne mtawalia. Moses Wahisi Ketian Michazo Mtazamaji na tamatisha awamu ya kwanza ya taarifa za KTN leo lakini kwenye KTN News tunaendelea na majadiliano kuhusiana na sheria kwenye sehemu yetu ya elewa sheria hii leo tunajadili haswa uh, kuundwa kwa jopo hili uh, maalum ama kamati hii maalum ya kuchunguza madai yanayomkabili uh, jaji wa mahakama ya juu Philip Tunoi ni madai kuhusiana na ufisadi na tutakuwa tuna, tunauliza maswali kama a uh kuhusiana na ni yapi ya kuterejewa ni yapi ya kutarajiwa ha, haswa baada ya siku saba ambapo tume hii inatarajiwa kutoa ripoti yake tutakuwa na wakili George Kithi na kusihi uendelee kuwa nasi kwenye KTN News